get so many more levels on the Lesh. So you, once you start tethering him and amping him up into this Bloodstone, he can be like level 10 or 11 at 11, 12 minutes, and, and you're just tethering down this monster on the map, right? The safe lane, you kind of have to execute the lane a lot better to get the levels, and probably you need more snacking to get up to that point. It just becomes a little worse. Also, when you can go into tether into the slash rack to create tempo, you can leave your carry alone, so the aisle's not sapping the XP even more from that safe laner. It's just a lot more smoother in the game in terms of building up to that point where suddenly the lesh rack is unkillable and you can take objectives off the map. And this is going to be a game from Liquid where the second that group up hits, it's going to hit really hard with some Visadoras and Io pumping in the heel, and then a Lashrak just frontlining with a toss back that forces you into that ball. That's where usually Tiny shines, and especially if you can rupture that target on the way. So if you're Spirit, you kind of got to gear up to be able to stand your ground versus what Liquid are going to throw at you, especially this Troll. Troll is not a hero in this game where if you get ruptured on your Toro or the Visage starts pouring the birds into you, that you can just run away and feel good about that fight. Mm. It's just not a scenario that I see panning out. You got to go in with the back wall combo with this Tusk tag team. It has decent synergy here, not only with the shell in the lane, but you have this Wind Ranger going in with Focus Fire with a max tag team that is a lot of extra physical burst damage. Something that might cause Mikke problems in trying to man up versus the Troll later. I think if your Toro gets five or six slots, this Troll can be pretty scary this game. However, he does have a lot that can kite him out in that late game with, between the Rupture and, you know, maybe some late game Nihilism or Io tethering away, Ghost Scepters, Toss away. Troll will always have Troll problems, even yeah. if you are your Toro God. Yeah, I mean, it is one of his most successful heroes. In fact, it's the hero that he has the second highest win rate in his career. So we'll see if he's able to uh, offset the... Uh, the perceived notion that Troll is a bad carry. I mean, they mainly picked it for the lane here and the AA synergy. Like, when you commit an Ancient Apparition, you can't fall behind on the AA lane and just become food on the map. You really have to bounce it out somewhere. So, in some ways, it, it puts, more, puts more onus on Maposhka to have high impact in those later fights versus, like, the four healers here, potentially, that the Visage is bringing in auras as well, like a Greaves or something later. The AA is the payoff. Maybe the Troll doesn't have to be the only one who's committing a carry impact in this game. It can come from your five. It's like these big team fighters like A and Phoenix, you have to bounce them out, which means you're going to lose something somewhere else. But of course, it was also a first pick overall Dark Seer. That is how much faith Team Spirit have and collapse on this hero to just carry them through the fight. Yeah, the AI, AA having a big payoff is the thing that's a little bit concerning me because, uh, I mean, game one, they had Chronosphere, right? Guaranteed for the Ice Blast. Sure. This game, you don't have nearly the same kind of lockdown. Right? Maybe you got a little bit of single target with the roll-in snowball into the punch, or you, you can about, have a vacuum, but none of it is the, like, big, big hole, you know? Did you watch that game three in the upper bracket final that we casted that I know you watched, but I'm asking you anyway? <laughs> I, I think I did watch the game I was casting, yes. <laughs> As you see this man's shackles in that game? They were pretty good, And yeah. you are saying they don't have lockdown? How dare you? How dare you insult the Laurel Wind I'm Ranger just saying it's point. not going to match up to Utoro's Chronos. At this That's point, all. if he shackled three heroes, I wouldn't even be surprised. <laughs> And that's, that's the lockdown you're looking for. I mean, Tusk and Troll going in with the slow on a back wall, I think is enough here to land some big AA ults. Like, you throw a Vortex, A Darkseer is no joke. You throw down an Ice Vortex on that wall, you're just perma-slowed. You can't get out yeah. of it. So the BKB for the Bloodseeker and the BKB for the Lestrac, when Liquid decide to pick those up, is also a big factor here. You try and get those around the second Roche, the third. How deep are you willing to scale in this game? How confident are you? This is a game I could see either team win late game. Uh, I don't think it's that clear who really pulls ahead here in the ultra, ultra late. And that Ice Vortex is a incredibly buffed ability lately. In fact, uh, I was talking to Seb backstage in the, the green room, and he would know that this is like maybe a strongest uh, ability now. The ability to be able to play off it both in lane and, and the way you're talking about it when it comes to the team fights, this hero is more than just an Ice Blast. I, I think AA was underpicked. This I think this hero is a lot stronger than people think. I think the max Vortex build, awful. it gets you a lot more farm. You can start the shove waves. You can start the farm camps. This spell is really obnoxious on a four second cooldown. And then your shard helps you chain these cold feats later. This hero has a lot more going for him than he used to. And he can play a lot more matchups, at least at a better rate. He still has the same problems like the zoo and, and the summons getting on top of you. Snowball top is collapsed dead here. It's looking like it. Yeah, they're going to run him down with well, the extra bit of burst. Blocks. I mean, really good body blocking. And Zania will eventually get that kill as Mickey was a bit scared to go for it. And that was a nice uh, heads up play by Miri. He might get the return. Nah, the tether. Tether's up in time. And this is like an, this is a combo we've seen from Western Europe the whole year long in terms of Zio Bloodseeker. Just deadly on the lane, especially if you're trading elsewhere, which is happening bottom. Yeah, they so damn fast. 
This damage from the Visage, a Visage Bloodseeker is such a scary combination in lane because Visage does so much damage with just level one of the Soul Assumption. You combine it with a four position that can give you those charges in the first place, and you're kind of guaranteed you're going to have some thirst problems in that top lane. This is a very strong laning phase from Liquid, bouncing back from that game two where it didn't go as well. Zai out of mana, going to give some reprieve to Yatoro, who also gobbled up that Lotus and went for a raindrop. Pretty much you have to on this Visage lane. Extra net worth getting burned away. However, the real victor in all this is Nisha, who oh, has opened yeah. up a tremendous <laughs> gap on Laurel here. 30 and 10 to 18 and 3. This is brutal, as he is guaranteed to get level 6 here and is pulling very far ahead in the net worth. This is similar to the matchup when he had the TA versus Puck, but surely this hero matchup is supposed to be a bit more even, right? I think the Wind Ranger should do a little better than this. I mean, it's probably less track favored with just Lightning Storm spam, but this is this is a large gap, and that's going to be a nice tether target into this mid game for Insania because you're going to have a fast arcane boots on the Lashrak and it's just going to pump so much mana into him here and increase the farm rate. Nisha doing Nisha things. A good sign for Liquid when he is on top form here. He's going to push Laurel down. And Laurel had a very good game too on that Batrider. This is another hero we've seen him dominate the tournament with. Six minute power room box. He's played out of vision, but he's going to pounce now with that a two man stun. avalanche. Two man split earth, a toss together. The snowball pickup can't grab the Wind Ranger while he's up in the air. Well, you can. He just couldn't do it there. And uh, that leads to a double kill for Liquid. One for Nisha, one for Boxy. Nice support rotation. Guarantee the six minute rune for Nisha, plus a big hefty bonus as he waits to pick up that shield rune and show them what is awaiting as it stacks for him on top of an Observer Ward mid that did not get dewarded. So everything going right right now for the Lashrak here. This is going to be a very fast Bloodstone if he decides to rush it. I mean, you could go Yules in this game. It's a very good Yules game, right? Versus the Darkseer with the Dispels, the Wind Ranger with the Dispel, even the Troll later on. You can maybe dodge an AA Blast in terms of the initial impact damage. I actually wouldn't mind the Yules for the Lashrak. I just think with this type of start with an Iolesh, like, you're pretty much always looking for Bloodstone in this combo, and he's so damn farmed. There's no there's no downside to going Bloodstone into a later Yules if you really want to. Is Boboshka going to get there? Oh, no. I don't think he is. Zai actually backed away to ensure that they got the Wisdom Rune. He will manage to TP out, so he won't be punished for that, but uh, he tried to sneak it. I mean, Boboshka still has very good levels here. Level 5 already on the Ancient Apparition. The sooner you get Ice Blast off, the sooner you are a hero in the game. He's looking for it. No kills on the Visage, though. Always a little sad. Like, Troll AA is a very strong lane, so the fact that Liquid got through this without feeding any sort of kills to Troll's way is, is pretty much what they were probably looking for in this lane. Like, you get a four-position Tiny out of lane, you're very happy, because that hero is incredibly strong in the big fights. Boxy making another rotation. See if he can catch Laurel on this avalanche. Not quite. While Zai is going to be gone on in the bottom lane. So left alone and Boxy failing to get the kill on mid means that Liquid are going to be a little upset about that rotation unless they can get the eight minute power rune here for Nisha. Well, I definitely curse Zai there. Uh, my apologies. He will give up that kill eventually. Oh, on the it spawns lane. bottom Liquid. Damn, a little bit of RNG time. luck. And Nisha getting a very strong early attack. game here. If you can use this Hastern to get another big core kill on the map, just run down a Dark Seer or a Wind Ranger or something, that would be the dream. They might even look to invade and see what kind of stacking Spirit have. They don't have anything. Look at another OBS on mid. A lot of resource dedication to this mid lane to snowball the Lashrak. It's pretty much how you want to play this ILS. Guarantee that Nisha has a good game here and you're just going to play through him. He's going to gobble up everything Dyer's here, including a Sal that he digs attack. up. I feel like that is always a place that watching Liquid, I feel like they're more successful is when they're playing through Nisha and Lit Mickey just be a more aggressive carry than most. I would, I would agree with that, yeah. I think Mickey is really good at playing that like one and a half, right? Yes, That's exactly. what they kind of want him. They want him and Nisha bouncing out the one and two, split between them. Maybe Nisha a little more priority in some of these games where he plays the carry mids. That is definitely the style Liquid are looking for, especially if they can up the tempo with it. Then they feel very comfortable. A haste rune and a smoke. A lot of opportunities here for Nisha to be able to pounce. They already have the rupture on a collapse. Laurel is going to go for the kill on a Mickey at the same time. See if they trade out course here. Mickey healed up enough, and Nisha's going to run down all of these heroes. Ice Blast coming in, but it's not going to land on the cores. The much needed kills that are just not going to land. 
Lee look at Mickey. He's charging forward with a healing salve on him. Still got to be careful of Laurel, though, in this skinny little bridge. He will maybe get the kill. No, the splitter. Oh, he out. does have enough for a power shot, but I think he just has to focus on getting out. Mapochka's positioning, though, is going to be a bit problem for Liquid. This Ice Vortex slowing him down. Laurel getting more damage on the way out. Real okay just to make sure that Nisha's going to be okay here and a quick refill on the mana. But Team Spirit could set up on it. I think you really want the Io out of this. I mean, there's still numbers up here is the problem. You just can't commit. You don't have the Tusk Punch. And that was an A ult that you really Dyer's wanted to land if you were Team Spirit. Yeah. That comes in a few seconds sooner. You probably just guarantee get the Bloodseeker kill. You eliminate the Io heal. And that situation goes a lot better for you. I mean, this tag team focus fire is no joke, even with the level one. I almost wonder if it would have been better for Mapochka to hold on to that until he was in the off lane, so he had a more of a direct shot instead of trying to fly it across yeah, he, the map. Yeah, he could have just like TP'd and thrown it really yeah. quick. He was also probably trying to get it bottom still. I'm gonna make those land as it'll be Battle Fury for Yatoro here on the troll. So you do have some item build options with this hero. You can just go early BKB Sanjin Yasha, which is a build we saw on him for a while. There's like the Maelstrom Rush into a faster Mjolnir. And Battle Fury is definitely the greediest, but pays off the most in the late game. So Team Spirit gearing up for the scale, as they're going to probably want all three cores with a lot of net worth here. And it's not a bad idea with this Darkseer. I don't think we've seen Darkseer lose a lot of late games. This hero's just a beast when he gets the Ags and the wall back, once BKBs are lower duration. Especially if you have a carry that you can help kite out with the Surge. He doesn't have the best illusions to pick up away from Liquid, but I guess if he's still hitting the right kind of walls and vacuums to set up the AoE damage, then you're probably still winning that fight. Yeah, it's about the Darkseer AA combination. Yeah, with a Tusk going in. Clearing through the stacks. Team Spirit trying to take advantage of this. The Shackle Shot doesn't land, nor does the Ice Blast. And Insania? Well, he's going to be chased down by the Focus Fire. He will die for this one, but you know Team Liquid wants to respond to this one. Zai's coming in. Can he get the Bird Drop? He does. Nicely played. It's going to be first Laurel, now Yatoro. Yeah, Yatoro in no man's land. Yeah, he's ruptured up. There's no way out of this one. He joins in on a bad fight for Team Spirit as it just comes down to that Shackle Shot. That was a very deep go for this IO, especially considering their stacks here. You know Liquid are going to defend this area. There's, you refuse to let Yatoro just run in here for free and get out. Yeah. Those bird stuns are going to guarantee you a TP cancel. So nice response from Liquid here. They do trade the tier one top versus the Darkseer. As Collapse will continue to ramp up here, get that team fight online for Team Spirit. Give some double damage tree smacks. Throw one more for the road. <laughs> Straight back in the bottom. Doesn't want to give up the safe lane tower. Doesn't want to go to the triangle yet without that battle fury. Bloodstone complete. 12 minutes. He is so big on the Lishrak, man. Look at the net worth. Just crazy. 110 CS already with 3-0 and 3. This is prime IO Lesh territory right here. And you're just going to start to run through these objectives and get onto the enemy side of the map. The second you start taking away the enemy camps with this IO Lesh, your net worth lead just skyrockets, especially if you can't fight the hero. You're already playing against so many healers. Now with the Bloodstone on the left track, the pressure just amps up even more for Mapochka to never waste an Ice Blast. Yeah, you can't throw it on anybody else here unless you're in a situation where Nisha cannot get to that fight. You even have the mech already done on Insania. He's even got Lotuses to boot. A lot of healing to pump into this Lesh if you do not land that ult. You really have to be patient with it, hold it, and play the fights for your connection here. As Long a wrap around. Will not scout that smoke. This is a great pickup because they already killed Yatoro once. If they, oh, the smoke is going to break. He's not going to make it out, though. Avalanche is going to land, and Yatoro, he's dead again. Not even skilling ult as he knows it is an absolute garbage ability. Yeah, it's going to be a, a fruitless use of it, even Laurel if he could get it off. Escapes the rupture here, and that reload will be wasted. I don't know. I don't think Team Spirit can take advantage of this reload, though. Set up for it on the other end. Yeah, it Collapse does seem like just Liquid hard. just hold the parts of the map required, so not too much loss. In fact, they're still going to get Mopochka as well. Toss him over to Zai, a little bit alley-oop into the dunk of the Visage. That's going to be one of the pieces here for Liquid. If they ever find the AA first with a Tiny Toss or the Birds and just force him out of the fight or force a bad ult, then suddenly, like, what is stopping this ILS train from just running into you? Yeah, I think that was the part that was interesting to me about some of the bands. They banned away the Beastmaster, banned away the Enigma, but in my mind, everyone had the Visage as one of the heroes for uh, 
Liquid to be picked up, and I think that's the best hero to actually get on top of the Ancient Apparition out of those three, right? At some point in time, he's going to get an Aghanim Scepter, and he's going to be just hunting Moposhka. Outside of the Lycan, yeah, I'd agree. Sure, I think Lycan yeah, just does it so point. much sooner. Like, you can get on top of him in eight minutes, he's gone. Yeah. Uh, but this Visage is a big threat in the late game. It's a big vision threat as well. We talked about vision a lot this series. There's not a lot of it on Team Spirit outside of this Darkseer pushing waves in to gain info. They're going to run to die. Connection. Shackle missed. But the block out here of the shards is going to do a lot. Resummons on the familiars just to try and hit these stuns and insane. He gets a really big heal with the mech and he's staying up on the high ground with the Helix out going in. They have to throw so much damage to finish off Psy, but they finally do kill him. Nisha is running low on mana. They have the rupture on out. Still a lot of damage. Off. Laurel, yeah, he's forever. gonna be chased down immediately in Maelstrom proc. Nisha is still working with enough here to be able to get one more kill, even a refill on his own bottle, thanks to the shovel. More gold into the Disco Pony's pocket as Nisha will clean up on top of his friend's corpse. They did get that refresh bird summon and they killed one of the birds. So that's pretty nice. You're gonna take these off the map for a while. You were probably losing a tower here as I I can't believe you're sticking around like yeah, this. Oh, he's here? gonna pay for it. Boss back in range. I mean, Yatoro's showing up. Now, he does manage to hit the Ice Blast before he dies here. Final Lightning will trade out him for Boxy. That ended up being incredibly good for Spirit, actually. What a sick bait. I thought he was just throwing his life away, but it stalls up the push enough that this Glyph comes through, you save your Tier 1 tower, and you get a kill for Yatoro. Battle Fury done. Not the fastest timing, but it's pretty good here for a Troll Warlord. Marl continuing to look aggressively for kills here. Yeah, the last time he did this, it did not work for them. They have level three tag team now, though. So the points have come in for Mira. It was a lot of damage and disable they were lacking that now they have. Threatening to push on this high ground. I mean, your burst is pretty solid. Like we saw their side dies pretty fast. It's just the heals that are preventing you from committing on these big targets. Yeah, the fact that he has Solar Crest, he got double familiar stuns out, and then he got a mech heal and a healing salve, and it still wasn't enough. It does go to show that Team Spirit will always have the single target burst to kill these heroes. Oop. Boxy. I'd like to response. see that Visage shard later on in this game. It's a really nice tool here. I think so too, yeah. Lineup that wants to go in and kind of burst you off the combo. You just stall it up. You're in a pretty good position. High ground ward for Liquid. Just sees everything here. Along with that Ice Blast wall. heading towards the rune here, but Mickey doesn't actually oh, yeah. step for the power rune. He's running into so many heroes, but so is Liquid. They are going to catch one part of that sandwich. It's going to be Mira on the tusk. Team Spirit having trouble finding connections with this AE ult in the early game. Oh, he had to use a rod of Atos on the Visage Familiar for fear of just a single stun setting up for Nisha to run down. The more this Lashrak gets to take off the map, the more it boosts up his team. You're gaining a lot of space on the map, you're farming a lot of camps, and it's pushing Laurel down as this Wind Ranger really needs to start finding the kills to keep up here. This Ato Shackle, they need to connect on top of Vortexes. Poshka is having trouble maybe joining the fight with the amount of zone control that Liquid have. Like, you, you misstep a little bit. You're getting tossed, you're getting bird stunned. There's a BKB up for the Bloodseeker now as well. Very strong timing for Liquid. They want to try and get a fight or just force the Roshan, especially with the pipe on Zai. This pipe is going to block a huge amount of damage in these early fights before Team Spirit get the really big scaling items online. Fast BKB, 3 minutes and 22 seconds faster, and a fast pipe as well. Team Liquid hitting big timings faster than normal. Team Spirit, see whether or not they're able to contend with that. Is it? One part I love about this series and the way it's developing is that it's actually showcasing the win condition for both teams is is what I think was their greatest strength. I think Team Liquid has always looked best when they're playing pretty fast, especially with Mickey playing, again, that kind of 1.5, two position, heavy rotations from him. Whereas Team Spirit, I mean, they're just so good on the late game team fight execution. It seems like that might be the MO for this series. Team Liquid need to win fast and furious. Well, you know, Team Spirit play off of Yutoro's great carry. This is not a bad carry to bank on. He's done it before. He is a majority of their scale, unless that Wind Ranger can find the late game farm. I agree. If Liquid can find the pace in this series, it's going to do a lot for them. You just push the greediness from Spirit down a notch, and suddenly the, the pressure's on them to find these big team fight connections. When you have the faces void, maybe you can do that here. This troll is not going to be able to like drag you back from a large net worth deficit. It's just not the same type of function that the hero is going to provide. 
as A Blast will scout this out. I don't think Liquid care. They're just gonna pipe it up and run through it. And this troll is just not a threat. He's not solo killing cores. He's not stalling out the game. He's not getting his lanes nearly as deep in as the Paceless Void was. BKB done for you, Tor. It'll be a BKB you just keep his bottom to farm with. And it's a fast Roshan for Liquid and Aegis for Nisha here. And the bots, Kaya, Lashrak. Look at them. He's thinking about that nihilism. Team Spirit played a lot off of the Twin Kaints when they held the map control, and they're expecting Liquid to do the same nice here. Setup. They back away right as Liquid is going through the gate. That could have been so good for them. Imagine they just TP into a wall pre-set up and a vacuum to follow it up. But Boxy actually led the charge oh, here. Give Sai the all clear, and now they push through. They're going to jump immediately, finding Maposhka. Great little pick off to start things. Will they get any more? Mickey is going to push forward to try and help him out here, but Team Spirit have already backed away. Look at how Liquid are playing the map. The three-man ball with the IO relocate that can come in and join those other skirmishers with the initiation. This is how you build a huge net worth lead with the IO type lineup, especially when Team Spirit are having trouble getting the lanes out. Just a bunch of birds running down some of these silings. Like, the birds are top while the Visage is bottom, so Zai is just controlling both parts of the map right now. Outside of uh, the stadium here, we've got a little bit of a drone show going on dedicated to Dota 2 here in Riyadh. So, damn. Inside and outside. Dota 2 action happening. 4 to 14. I don't know what that is, but it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Is it a turtle? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structure. Maybe it's the new courier. Maybe that's. One of these teams' hopes and dreams floating away. <laughs> we go deeper in this series. I don't know who's. That's what we're going to figure out here. As the pressure will ramp up from Liquid, they put this Diabolic Edith to work and will take a quick tier two. The birds on top of it. And Drum, a Drum gone back here for Zai. I really like the Drum on the Visage. I think it just amps up your damage so much in like the first 20, 30 minutes. Once you take these really early fights, it's just going to be a high ground push to force heroes back off the map. I don't know if Yatoro is really comfortable taking fights yet. It feels like the pace has just been everything in these first three games. Whoever's able to set it and get what they want in terms of the tempo has felt very comfortable. And so far in this game three, it has been all liquid. Not a massive lead, but they are definitely controlling a lot more on the map, getting more for their supports here, and two supports that can do a lot. In terms of Toro the with up. his BKB, he needs to be able to find a kill on the start of this fight, and he will have it. Visage is going to die before the relocate goes out from Insania. The Rupture, though, is Still gonna do it. serious damage to Yatoro, and he's gonna play without potentially the Zyle. Beautiful Shackle Shot onto the Vintage Familiar, plays against him, but he does have that Bloodstone, and a Relocate away from the Ice Blast, but Mickey does die as he commits on in. Yatoro's heal back up, as back they're gonna try and play this for out with the Leshrac, but Team Spirit have completely outfought them. They saved the Leshrac for last, and they'll finish him off on his second life with Liquid. Getting nothing out of that. Absolutely nothing. You had momentum in this game. You had tempo. You had pace. And in a flash, it is all gone as Team Spirit sucked that net worth lead straight into their coffers here. Off of what was just a walk-up initiation from Yatoro. Tanks the rupture and just runs through it here. I mean... That is a ballsy play. I don't know if the troll could really just tank that damage without Collapse coming in with a perfect pipe timing here to match what Zai was putting out. That reload dodges the AO, but it ends up kind of backfiring as you wanted the Lashrak damage going in on the Wind Ranger. They'll pick up Laurel off of a pretty damn good Sentry Ward here. Yeah, this uh, works out very nice for for Liquid because they they just lost a ton of momentum off that team fight. All of a sudden, the pick off on Laurel does give them a window. In fact, they. Almost fine, Mira, but he TPs away. And the Glaipnir from this Wind Ranger is pretty impactful right now because you don't want to pop BKB on your Bloodseeker for this Glaipnir. There's no BKB on Isha. He has opted for this Ags build. He is just trying to go fast nihilism. It's going to make the Troll's life really difficult with the extra ethereal action he's going to have to pump a Nullifier into perhaps later. It looks like it's on the menu for Yatoro after a Satanic and after finishing SNY. That is a lot of gold to push through here. But damn, he put himself in a decent position off a single team fight. He collapsed this lead down, and that is the strength of Darkseer. That is why this hero got first pick for Team Spirit. They probably feel like they can win any team fight with this hero, especially the later this game goes. 
These, vo these walls of vacuums, especially with the vortex down, are just so damn hard to run. Yutaro trying this one solo, but he knows the relocation is going to be there. Boxy's trying to get a toss away, but the BKB is actually oh going to hurt Mickey here. And Yutaro is one just manning up. <laughs> He's going for a crazy 1v5, but ultimately, he did get what he wanted out of that, which was Mickey's life. I, I guess take him down with you here. And as Yutaro boss dragging the enemy carry down with him in a 1v5 situation. Maybe Team Spirit, a little sad their trolls off the map for a longer time period. I mean, Yatoro was higher level here. And like you said, is the Bloodseeker the real carry in this game, or is it the Lashrak? Are you actually trading a one-for-one? One? I feel like you are. I feel like the Lashrak is the boss of this game. Even though that Bloodseeker is technically ahead of him. It's be more push for Liquid as they try and regain portions of this map. The birds doing the work. I mean, the way that Mickey is building up, it does seem like he's just trying to be an anti-hero to the troll. I'm going to rupture you, and I'm going to Heaven Talbert you. I'm going to let my Leshrac do the rest of the work. Troll can fight through this if you get the late game with Blink, and you just Blink start on a target, right? Then even if you rupture him, like we saw there, you're just permanenting or bashing a guy. You don't have to run around in this rupture, particularly if you can start on the Bloodseeker or the Leshrac. Net worth for Yatoro is the key to Team Spirit's team fight here. Keeping him alive is a big deal. Getting the Wind Ranger to five or six slots also a big deal. As yeah, you are playing for a lot of prize money here. The a lot of zeros. Ramping up. And it'll be an Ag's done for the Lashrac. So Nihilism. Full option now for Nisha to try and kite these fights out. Provide some more frontline. Maybe not have this Bloodseeker be the first target of the Troll Warlord and this cusp physical burst damage. The a shard from here. Not a bad shard, to be honest. You lock someone in here, it gets really annoying really fast. Yeah, and you need the max effectiveness out of that kind of catch and using your BKBs, right? I mean, this is going to be a problem through the Rupture, through the Nihilism pickup now, through maybe the Stone Form on the Visage eventually. you got to get kills through your BKB direction. Otherwise, once those fade away, you're in some trouble, I think. It, it, it may even come to the point, do you think think even though they have this great hard carry, well, great, quote unquote, in uh, Troll. <laughs> I mean, Troll's a great carry. Yeah. I think the stats would disagree, but. <laughs> well, he's only been played three times this tournament, and I he guess. has a 66% win rate. Damn, that was looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> At least Yutoro's stats do disagree. Man's got like a 70 plus Where win rate on this hero. I'm just concerned a bit about their, their late game of just like, what happens after, if you don't get a kill with a BKB, what does that team fight look like for you? Might look better if you can land this blast. It'll clip Nisha. He's just too damn fast. Yeah, he's already out. Actually, he's just full health, able to reset. Team Spirit, I don't really see how you play that without the Ice Blast, but we'll see. I mean, they, have a, they found a lot of farm on their supports in this game, right? The Tusk and the AA have really picked up the, the wave crushing here. You have an Aether Lens on the AA. I would not be surprised if Team Spirit try and itemize to help you Toro in some of the terms you're talking about, like some uh, Lotus Orbs, some Lincoln Spheres, just pump a single target reflection onto your troll. Could be sure. pretty nice here. There's not a huge amount that pops it. And we already have Collapse thinking about it. He's just going to go Lotus. That's going to be pretty nice for Yatoro. Like, you can buy a lot of utility for this troll. Just turn him into a, a standalone beast. Make him such a threat with the late game nullifier that he can jump on whoever and you can't turn it back around. And that's a Lincoln's done for Laurel. Pretty damn nice for him in dealing with the ruptures, but also something that could be thrown on somebody else. Oh, Boxy, if, don't if do it. In first. <laughs> he doesn't do it. He sticks around to block the Ancient Camp. Is this Liquid trying to posture for this next Roshan? Yeah. That's what they really want in this game. An Aegis on either the Bloodseeker or the Lashrak, but probably the Lashrak so he can just run in. Even if you A ult him, he just comes back a second time. That's a way to deal with that. And Nisha's BKB is probably going to be the most important timing in a long time for Liquid in this game. At what point, we talked about when do you commit for this item on the Lashrak. It's going to come out... You know, after this Nihilism, maybe a little later than I thought, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a question of, do you get the second Roshan with that BKB? And how many fights do you get value out of it before it starts to get whittled down? And then you're just getting stuck in vortexes and shards and a vac wall and all this gunk that you have to run through. Right. If you can't run through it, you're not dealing damage with this hero. You might just get kited out. This collapse will finish his Lotus Orb off the earlier disassembled bit booster. Now, that's another factor here. You reflect that rupture. Suddenly, Nikkei is not having the impact he wants as a smoke from Team Spirit will debilitate a watcher. Team Liquid know they're here. Team Spirit have had Team Liquid's number 
when it comes to the execution of a lot of the five on fives, particularly when they're already set up. And this Roshan fight, it feels like they, this is the fight that breaks open the game one way or the other. I'm just gonna TP out. Actually, give up the space. Well, it's going to Radiant side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 yeah. seconds. They're gonna have to go through the portal, see if Team Liquid's fast enough to get there before Spirit will. The thing is, the lane is super deep down here, so Mickey had to go back to the tier two to shove it in. They don't wanna play with this lane. Vision's disadvantage right now. Yeah, if Spirit's fast enough, they might they actually be able there. to either catch Mickey or take the four versus five. Well, they're just gonna they're gonna try and catch the Bloodseeker on the intercept. Is it fast enough? You have an Observer Ward, you do Maposhka. Does oh. not see him as he gets in the trees. They see Boxy, that's a great target as well. Boxy, yep, yeah, they're gonna jump him immediately. Try and burst him without using any sort of Berserker's Rage. Just keep him from a distance, and they got him. That is a very nice pickoff. He does have buyback here. Liquid can commit. It's Radiant side, it's gonna take him a while to get back here. Spear gonna poke in and that Lotus and Lincolns are being thrown on Yatoro, so you have to think about these ruptures. The pipe now being on cooldown means Team Spirit. Yatoro feels confident he's gonna push forward. They've got a window where the tiny is not here. He's gonna try and go through the gate. Oh, this is dangerous. He's gonna come back into instant damage. He may not be able to blink away. Boxy, if you do this, it could be a tieback. He keeps on baiting it. Is he ever gonna go through? Oh my no, god, he's no just way gonna keep go him through. sitting there. Your Toro's Wait, your Toro's gonna through. go through, and Boxy doesn't realize it because the animation what? is on his own side! Oh no! He's got the Ogre Seal totem though. He may have a chance to be able to get away. Your Toro chases after him, and Team Spirit. And now, now maybe they're the, the other ones side to of get the map. Zai He's going for lore. Where's your Toro? Your Toro, save us, please! Oh no, Come Team back. Spirit! They're already Brother. gonna be run down. That's gonna be two heroes dead, one of them with no buyback. That's dangerous. Ice Blast, it doesn't really clip. They immediately dodge away over the side. Now a toss back up on your Toro tried to go for the chain stuff, but no. Nihilism. Nihilism, though. The BKB, it gets kited out, and he knows it, too. He immediately just has to TP away and collapse. Oh, no. Yatoro in his bold move of going through the portal to try and catch Boxy will end in betrayal for the rest of Team Spirit. The Boxy gate bait is just <laughs> too damn juicy to refuse. Yatoro bites and hook, line, and sinker all of a sudden. Wait, guys, our carry's on the other side of the map? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was, he did not think that went through entirely. No, because if he wants that fast kill, then he would need to pop BKB for it. I don't know. I mean, that might have been worth it for a dieback on Tiny to get it right away. I mean, if Team Spirit play that sequence perfectly right, it's an okay play to make. They just yeah. need to back off with everybody else. I don't think they were thinking about it either. And then all of a sudden, you just you have to go back to the game, pop an early BKB. By the time you're there, your whole team's dead, and a Roshan the Team Spirit we're angling for will be taken away by Liquid without having to commit that Lashrak BKB. That feels really good for Nisha here. As he can maybe just postpone it even farther. Oh, well, Picks up a Shiva's guard. Did Insania think there was going to be some sort of go there? Or did no, they just, just want to refill? refreshing the resources here. Okay. That's a pretty low cooldown. No need to hold it. There'll also be a cheese on the IO, so you're technically looking at potentially three lives for this Lashrak. That is a lot for the troll to fight through here. Yeah, how do you, like, you have to, it means you kind of have to hold your Ice Blast if you want to kill the Lashrak first in a fight. You have to kill him without an Ice Blast and then catch him on the second life. But even then, he could get relocated out, even if he doesn't get the heal, just being able to dodge damage. I don't think you can go on the Lash anymore. I think you yeah. have to take out the IO and the Tiny Maybe try and find the Bloodseeker. Use the axes to blind the birds, buy you some time. Laurel's got to find a big target. Big shackles, help your team fight out. You can poke the Lesh like this. You have a Nullifier now. Ice Blast's going to be used here. Can they put enough damage to take away that Aegis? They're going to try. Oh, what a combo. beautiful vacuum from Collapse. Now they do have the pipe. They're going to pop the Berserker's Rage and just try and lead into these heroes. BKB, make it. Can he get away? Where's the net? Oh, oh what beautiful shards. And Sini comes in. It's the cheese. That's going to help him out. And then they turn back onto Yatoro, who gets a four Staff away. He's OK for now. Beautiful disengage. Great stuff from Team Spirit. The improv earlier of Yatoro may not have been something Team Spirit was prepared for, but that fight they certainly were. Man, supports with very clutch small plays. That, there's a high chance you lose Troll in that engagement, and you're just looking at a Rax for Team Liquid. Instead, the Shard catches the Bloodseeker enough that he doesn't dive deeper, and you get him out with a super fast force stamp before the stuns come through. Miro and Maposhka protecting their carry here and maybe putting Yatoro on their back as this troll struggles to commit into the fights, but they did find that Aegis, and they got the cheese out of the aisle. So two of those three lives are gone. 
I would take that for a single BKB here. They're gonna go for Laurel. Avalanche connects. He doesn't have BKB, so if they get the toss on him, great snowball save. That gives Laurel an opportunity to get out. It probably cost Mira his life. Ice Splash over the top of things is gonna oh, land on Ohio. some heroes. They go for the relocate out. Insania interrupted Canceled. by the vacuum. Really great play, but once again, Yutaro's unsure of where he can get in on Liquid. He has no BKB. He does not want to commit 10 more seconds here. Otherwise, I think he for sure just goes on the IO. Six seconds for that BKB. No AL that's gonna wear off. It's not an opening, but they will bail their Wind Ranger out. This game continues to get stalled up. Liquid can't find that high ground push with the second Aegis, and it'll probably be going to a third here. So now it's a question of how do you build and scale up for that team fight? Zai is gonna become a big threat as well, as he found a lot of farm off those fights. Full AC for the Visage. He can go into that Ags, he can go into a BKB shard of his own. Whatever he wants to just become an annoying frontliner, an annoying backline support MP. sniper. A lot of options for him. And it's an opening that has pushed Collapse down as well. Like, Collapse wanted these team fights to go his way so we can continue to scale in this game. He has not found a lot here in the last five or six minutes. He's pretty much stuck on the same items we saw him stuck on that previous Rose fight. Yeah, that's true. Utility, name of the game. How do you buff up your cores who need to go in and man fight each other? Got it. it like the various abilities that Team Spirit are using to enable Yotoro really goes to show that this hero cannot operate alone. He definitely needs all the utility from the supports to have a successful fight, and even then, sometimes it doesn't prove to be enough. If you get Laurel to the five slots, then it's not as attack. dependent on the troll, right? Then this Wind Ranger can start running in with the, the Axe Wind Run, causing some mischief. Maybe you land a two hero shackle, and suddenly the commit is way easier. Rupture on Mira should kill Mira. That is He's the level 20 well. talent in play there, the extra rupture range. Hmm, putting on some moves. Yeah, they have the thirst on him. Yeah, he's just getting out of here. Uh, I don't think if he gets a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a little bit more heal thanks to the mech. And that's a bird resummon that's going to probably get killed here. Okay, so no birds for 60 seconds. If you can kill them through yeah, the Graves, you can kill them. Yeah, Zai is really trying to keep them alive. They got one. He's Not a... too bad. The big item for Spirit, though, is a Satanic on Yatoro. Like, he's still missing it, which means when he gets stuck in an ult that goes deep, that Battle Trance is a very double-edged sword. More often than not, you end up stabbing yourself. Yatoro has to be very selective, especially during this BKB nullifier duration. He's going to run into the Lashrak. This is a hard target to go on. Especially oh, he's got with a East Rune with the Lincolns. Instant reload from Insania. Very, from very Spirit, careful. Oh, this went off of where it is, though. He's on the high ground, I think. Yeah, it's actually kind of an awkward position. It. If he stays up on the high ground, maybe he's OK. But if he comes back on the low ground, which he does, easy kill. And that was a gem. He did not drop the oh. gem in base. Uh, what? Misstep here from Insania as he could have just left it back home, but it express delivery straight to Team Spirit. Decent swing. I wonder if he thought he was going to be able to get away, but... Yeah, maybe he thought they didn't see him there. However, Spirit... Now they're just pushing high ground. No Ohio for 30. Yatoro feels confident enough to do this. Oh yeah, Team Spirit have already shown that, that so once bad. they get that small little break in your discipline. But this is for time oh, toss. Man. This is insane that he's doing this. He's baited out the jump. He gets a four stat back away before they get the nullifier out. So they manage to get the tier three and get a buyback out of the IO. That, that was actually an insane play by Yator. Like, the fact that you're going up there versus a Tiny Toss that can just lock you super deep in the base versus a Rupture, and you're basically just banking on the fact that Boxy's not there ready for it. Mm. <laughs> that, your that, supports are going to hit you with the four stamps in the yeah, right that, time. That tells such. you everything you need to know about this man. Absolutely fearless when it comes down to the clutch time, and he is pushing for that level 25 talent. Once more, Yator will lead the pack here in experience. It's an oh, it's a decent talent for the troll. Like this strong dispel. No joke. He, I wonder if you ever go for this other talent in a game where maybe you get that pierce on a BKB Bloodseeker and you remove some of the hit chance. I yeah. rarely see it. I'm not sure. If, yeah, I feel like he's not going to care about the Bloodseeker's damage, particularly with the Satanic. Yeah, I, I think you just always take the strong dispel. Like there's a chance you get tossed into some hex later in this game. Yeah. You just need to be itemized and ready for it. As Nisha never went for this BKB on the Lashrak, he just went for the Lincolns. 
the greedier option, but the option that will scale harder here. Yeah, he understands that his nihilism is only as strong as his Lincolns against the Nullifier. And we still have yet to feel Laurel's impact in these fights in terms of the big shackles. That is always a factor. You land a two-hero shackle, it's so much time for Yatoro to go in and just smack you. High ground ward, they're gonna see Yatoro. They're gonna the get the rupture toss back. That's gonna be a ton of damage into the split earth. But he got off the ultimate, he got off the BKB, he got off the satanic, he's back the up the full. And the three is stuck, a beautiful vacuum ice blast. Now they do still have that combo. Nisha is a problem a little bit here. They gotta be able to focus down with Laurel. Laurel and Yatoro resets. Nisha three gets the relocate out. Perfect timing from Insania. But now without that, it's just an opportunity to run down more. Looks like Zai's gonna be the first one. They're gonna catch Boxy as well. Four staff over the shards, but he's not gonna make it very far. A snowball will hunt him down. That reload went deeper on the map, by the way, but they just couldn't re-engage. It did not go to the fountain, so you're not healing this Lashrak up. A very clutch reload nonetheless. Otherwise, your Lashrak is 100% dead there. And as we'll have a pause to think about that team fight. I mean, what a, a small back. window. I think that, was it just Nisha's split earth was just a stack? Cause this is gonna be troll level 25 off that fight. Yep. You and cannot start on him anymore. Mirror's gonna be more ready for it as well, right? Cause he could also blink snowball oh, yeah. save it's, and then that's effectively true. the same thing. You have to think about the snowball saves versus tiny, like this tiny tusk four position battle. It's one we've seen a lot of times over, over a lot of TIs and big tournaments for a reason. They're two heroes that can start the fight very reliably on their terms. The Tiny has generally been stronger because of the displacement, but the Tusk save is no joke in some of these big late game battles. You buy time for a rupture target, maybe you get another wind run off because you put Laurel into that snowball, you reset the fight. You might just run out of damage on the side of Liquid between the Bloodseeker and the Lashrak, and Yatoro is starting to shred objectives here. Like you said, that Roshan is gonna be a late spawn. Not happy about that one, as Liquid might have a chance to contest. They indeed will as their heroes come back up. But they have lost a lot of map control. The lanes are going in. And Yatoro has farmed up his buyback in this game, something he did not have for that fight. That is why that toss into the stun was so pivotal there. That is a troll who fought out, did not have the level 25 talent, and now he has both. He's just not a target you can go on anymore. Yeah, now Liquid have to play a longer team fight. Or they have to get the burst on somebody else. Either way, a troll is going to be terrifying because eventually he's going to get Swift Blink as well, and then he's going to be the one starting the fights. The second he goes in, if there's a back that lands on three or four, it feels like that fight is over. Right? Yeah. Team Unless Spirit's you like get out and reset it with a bunch of four staffs here. Your positioning on Liquid means everything. You have to space it properly. You have to be together enough that you can focus a target that gets tossed in and also spread enough that you don't get punished on the counter initiation from Collapse. Not an easy task here, as they're gonna run Nisha with a shield rune in. He is extremely tanky right now. But if they could get the nullifier on him, it would be massive. Boxy tries to jump in, only hits an avalanche. The toss over is into Mira instead. They now try and disengage. Immediately a relocate backwards, but Yutoro didn't really use too much for it. He's Mira, winning. snowball over the side. They do manage to get the nullifier on Lesher. They're focusing him. The he relocate commits. is not gonna come back in time. Now the vacuum into the wall catches the two supports. They do manage to get the relocate out. Oh, liquid. the Bloodseeker is pushed into this one with the nullifier on him. Buybacks raining in from Team Liquid, but once again, Team Spirit just looks so much better in these team fights, man. Nisha is playing for it with the Nihilism. They have to win the second part that of the team fight with a beautiful avalanche toss. Oh, is he actually going to do this one? Yutoro dies. No way. Now a Another buyback shackle. opportunity for Team Spirit with a shackle shot launching the down. Nisha's got to go. Boxy's got to leave. They've got to get out of here because they can win one part of this fight, but the other the part. Track on his own and he's a pig no help in sight it's just boxy with one more combo and he got canceled by collapse he's got another nihilism if he can wait out the nullifier maybe he can turn he's gonna chase down laurel now the him. nullifier goes out he's gonna go for the tp way off of this one collapses he and have a vacuum they don't have anything to stop him no way nisha gets out i thought he was dead for sure he got double shackled and a shard off that buyback your mid racks almost died this entire time for liquid they somehow get an equal buyback out of Yatoro there, but of course he will be able to refill his pockets with an Aegis as he pushes through that engagement. He shredded through them so damn fast. Double buyback out from Liquid off the Tiny and the Lashrak. Double buyback out from the <laughs> Tiny. What, what are you doing here? I mean, it's a nice bird attempt. That's about all it's going to yield. And this is an Aghanim Scepter Roshan. Who are you giving it to here? Toro really wants the extra stats and the axes. He does. 
be more dispel opportunities for you, Toro. Satanic BKB, now the Aghanim Scepter. I mean, this this Ag's trolled now dispels the Ethereal on the Lesh, right? This is a big deal in this game. They're also throwing a lot of buffs on him. This is uh, this is an influential troll Ag's. And I mean, the shards from Mira have just been disgusting in these fights. Oh, yeah. I mean, the extra shard distance really helping out. And somehow they are able to turn this with a four-man avalanche toss into the Pulse Nova. Cannot stand there long as Yatoro feels the pain. The reloads from Insania have also been on point this game. Like, it is worth mentioning, right? He got Mickey out of there initially. It's really disjointing the target prioritization from Team Spirit and elongating these fights. I mean, I wouldn't say entirely on point. Sometimes he's been a little bit jumpy on it. As soon as something happens, sure. he uses the relocate. But the thing is, if you don't use it instantly, that target is gone. Like, you saw how True. fast Nisha died there. It's yeah. under two seconds. You do not have enough time. You pretty much have to decide instantly when the first point of contact latches. Are you really only that hero out? Are you not? It's a very difficult call to make. I mean, you are right. He, he has not been there every time. It's just so damn fast, the burst damage out from Team Spear right now. Oh, Mickey, 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 Mickey. The smoke is going to break. He's going to blink away in time. He blinks off the side, no but he can't get far back. enough back into his base. He pops a BKB, but he is caught in a corner. Oh, no. 85 seconds now. A dieback for Team Liquid. The first of potentially many, as they do not have many heroes left. And Nisha was thinking about running down this mid lane, but it's a catapult wave, so he probably couldn't have killed it that fast and opts not to risk it here. Excuse me, it wasn't a dieback. He just doesn't have yeah, to get off the gold. he just doesn't have the gold. So it's 60, 70 seconds, no Bloodseeker. Yatoro, you know this man is going to push it right now. Aegis for three minutes, Satanic Ags and level 25 talent. How do you bring him down? It has to be a tiny toss in deep. But how do they do the tiny toss? Oh, instant sight! They were ready for that one. And not not today, Box. He pulled them back in with the Ice Blast vacuum. Nisha. The team fight Maestros do it again. A dieback on Nisha should be the end of the game now as Team Spirit. Five, six, seven lives on them. Two remaining on the side of Liquid. There's no chance. No hope at all. Team Spirit will just run over them. Liquid trying to play for a fountain at this point in time, but they know it's over. Damn. GG is called. Now Team Spirit one game away from claiming yet another finals. This is where the pressure is.